I don't know if you guys have ever heard about desired temperature, but I've created a spreadsheet that does all the calculations for you. So if you're like, what the heck is desired temperature? I did an entire video which explains what it is, and I'm going to link it up in the cards above. Um, so this video is just going to walk you through how to access this Google spreadsheet to help you calculate your um, liquid temperature for your dough to be in the desired temperature range. So this video just explains how to access the spreadsheet and how to use it. Um, so just keep on watching. After you click on the link, this document should open up. In the top left, you should see view only, and that means you're not able to edit and use this document yet. In the bottom, I have instructions that tell you how to save the file so you can use them to make bread. So I have a couple of options for saving the file. Um, the first one is using file and save as Google Sheets. So if you do file, save as Google Sheets, it opens up in a new tab and you're able to edit this document. So you can see that the view only in the left, top left is gone. So this automatically saves the file in your Google Drive. So if you have a Gmail account, you have a free Google Drive with a certain amount of space. The second option is using file, make a copy. So if you do file, make a copy. So you're able to change the name of the file. And you're also able to set where you want to save the file. So you can go ahead and save it in your free Google Drive or you can save it on your computer. So you can download it and you can use Excel to open up the file. So I'm just going to go ahead and do my Google Drive. And I'm gonna click OK. Um, so each time you save in your Google Drive, it opens up a new tab. If you save on your computer, it's going to go ahead and save it in your download folder or wherever downloaded files are saved. I'm just going to demo using the Google Drive version. After you've saved the file, you should be able to edit it. I also have instructions in the right of the sheet, so this should be very user-friendly. A um, couple of things I want to point out is um, I have different tabs. So I have um, Fahrenheit and Celsius because I know not everybody uses Fahrenheit. Um, I also have a temps tab or sheet, and this is what I'm using for my calculation. So you could pretty much ignore this sheet or tab. So if you're using Fahrenheit, go ahead and use the Fahrenheit tab. If you're using Celsius, go ahead and use the Celsius tab. Um, so they look identical, just that everything is in C. So I'm going to go ahead and use the Fahrenheit sheet or tab. Um, again, I have the instructions here. Um, so let's say we're making basic sandwich bread. Um, for number of factors, we're going to put in three because we don't need a sponge. Um, so we're going to put in three. Um, room temperature, you can use, um, I forget what they're called, but I have something that um, measures or tells me my room temperature or the temperature of the room it's in. Um, if you don't have that and you have a thermometer, you can use that to measure the temperature of the flower. I found that the temperature of the flower in the room are usually um, pretty close, um, which makes sense because the flower is in the room. Um, so let's say we're measuring um, our room is reading, let's say, 78 degrees F because it's in the summer. Um, and then we go ahead and measure our flower. Um, so we put in a thermometer in the flower and it reads 79. Again, if you don't have a thermometer um, and you know what your room reads, what your room temperature is, you can use that. So if you're not using a sponge, just go ahead and leave this blank. Um, so for friction factors, I have drop down. Um, so I have the different friction factors here. So if you're kneading by hand, put in five. If you're using a stand mixer, put in 22. And if you're using a food processor, go ahead and put 25. Um, so let's say I'm kneading by hand, put in five. And then the DDT, desired temperature. So I have the range 75 through 78. So go ahead and pick one. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. There's three degrees between the um, the mean and the max. I tend to use the lowest temperature, lower temperatures during the summer and the higher temperatures during the winter. So it's really, it's been really warm this summer. So let's go ahead and put 75. So this is telling me that the liquid to use for my dough should be 63 degrees. If I'm kneading by hand and I want my 
dough to be at 75 degrees F after kneading. So let's say I'm making sourdough and I'm using a, a sourdough sponge, of course. Um, so I'm gonna put in four for my number of factors. I'm gonna keep everything the same, but let's say for my sponge, um, I put it in the fridge and I took it out and it's only reading 65 degrees. Um, I'm also kneading by hand. Well, let's just say, let's say we're, I've actually never made sourdough, so just ignore this if it's wrong, like ignore like the examples. Um, but let's just say we're kneading um, with a stand mixer. Um, I don't know if you can, I, again, I've never made sourdough bread yet. Um, but let's just say just for this example, for this purpose, we're gonna put 22. And for a desired temperature, let's just say we're gonna use 76. So this is telling me my liquid temperature to use should be 60 degrees um, if I'm kneading with a sand mixer and I want my desired temperature to be at 76. Another thing I wanted to bring up um, for those of you who may have concerns about the security of this sheet. Um, so no one will be able to tell who you are um, unless maybe you know them. So this is the account that has the editing rights to this Google Sheet document. Um, and I have my other account um, and you can see it doesn't even it doesn't even recognize that um, the other account so it doesn't have that other username or picture um, so that means if you guys are, are accessing the, the document I wouldn't be able to tell who you are um, and also um, you are the only one who has access to this document so let's say I wanted to access um, this document with my other account you see here that it says that I don't have access. So you are the only one who's going to have access to the worksheet after you save it. So I hope that gives you some peace of mind. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys.